Wow, Sean Porter out here looking jacked ahead of his upcoming fight with Terrence Bud Crawford. We're going to talk about all that more in this video. What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. Listen, I don't know how you found my video, but somehow you made it. Please help others arrive at this content by throwing a like on the video. It's free, it's simple, and it goes a long way when you guys do that. So please throw a like on the video, subscribe if you like the content. Let's get into it. Now I'm back with my original segment, Ego Weight Watchers, AKA Ew, where I give you guys a look into the fighter lifestyle before, after, and progress picks, especially when they have an upcoming fight. Now, a fight I'm really looking forward to is Terrence Bud Crawford and Sean Porter. Sean Porter is a two-time former champion in the welterweight division, illustrious career, and a great resume. I've told you guys for years that Terrence Crawford really needed a name, big names, because Sean Porter has a better resume if you look at the totality, especially if we're talking about the welterweight division. So this is what both fighters wanted. Sean Porter has been very vocal and he stated that he's already been in the waters with the best of them. The only person that he has yet to share the ring with that's really relevant and a dominating person that's not under a certain age because you can't really factor in Jerron Boots Ennis and Virgil Ortiz in general because although those are great fights for anybody Virgil Ortiz and Boots Ennis they're on their way up so they gotta keep going through the rankings and stuff like that it doesn't really make sense for Sean Porter to fight a Jerron straight now or straight away or whatever unless it's they work their way up to the rankings Sean Porter is a veteran he's been a longtime pro and he's already been at the, the mountaintop so he's looking for the big fights with other people who are already made for that that caliber of fight and I think Crawford is is a likely shoe-in again he's already fought Danny Garcia he already fought undefeated Keith Thurman he already fought undefeated Errol Spence Jr. and a slew of other names like Broner. Ah oh, man, you know. Antarctic Bears, Alcoholic Beverages, AB, right? So he's already fought the ABs and Pauli Malinagis and Phil LaGrecos and Kell Brook when he was undefeated. So this is this is the fight that needs to happen. Now you guys seen the picture Sean Porter. I made it the thumbnail picture you can see he's in remarkable shape he has about three weeks to go november is jam-packed full of great fights for boxing perhaps one of the greatest months of boxing in terms of all the fights that are lined up that we've seen in the last 10 years and that's not an understatement lots of great fights from canelo versus plant crawford and porter to figueroa versus fulton you got Jaime Munguia and Rosado. You got a lot of fights. Tio Fimo's finally fighting Cambosos. A lot of great fights coming up. But Crawford Porter, back to that fight. Sean Porter looks to be in, in amazing shape. He looks sensational. This is no surprise. I've been in Sean Porter's gym when he had this gym out in Vegas. And this is how he trains. He's always in shape, but he looks like he's... He, look, he looks in shape. He looks even more jacked. I don't know if it's his age or what, but like in terms of his bicep, I, whatever him and Larry Wade and his father, Kenny Porter, got him doing, it looks like it's paying off. This is going to be a really fun fight. Now, the thing I like about the fight outside of the obvious, like it's for a title and things like that, is people may say they know how this fight is going to play out, but we really don't. And here's the reason. Because... As great as Terrence Crawford is, I don't feel like based on who he's fought with top rank, especially in the welterweight category, there we don't know all there is to know about Terrence Crawford, right? I think, and I made a video about it, Mean Machine dropped him. He didn't get credit for it. It happens. It is what it is. He came to stop Mean Machine anyway. But I think this is going to be a really challenging fight. And the one thing I like about it is you got the spirit of both fighters and neither fighter really has much give. So 
what does that mean when you have a battle of a will and two fighters that neither one of them wants to to back away or neither one of them wants to give then it makes it really combustible because unless it ends in a draw more often than not somebody got to win and somebody got to lose and I think a lot of people are, are sleeping on that. I think this is going to be a really aggressive fight. One of the big keys here is Sean Porter looks like he's in great shape. Ego Weight Watchers. You guys let me know in the comment section what you think. But um, the fact that Sean Porter, he is he's ruthless in his approach. Like he's very aggressive. Some people call him a football player. He's athletic. Lots of feints. Lots of hand feints. Foot, like feints with his footwork the stutter step he does almost like Manny Pacquiao with the stutter step right and he's looking for openings and then he his reaction time he'll he'll stay on your chest and he'll jump on you me personally the thing that's very interesting about that is I don't recall a person that has approached Terrence Crawford with that type of style like I remember being in New York for Sean Porter versus Berto and I thought at the time that was a great fight. That was going to be a great fight. But Berto, he was um, kind of caught off guard with how rough Sean Porter was. And he was pandering to the ref and stuff like that. And then Sean Porter ended up hurting him and getting the, the stoppage. And, and Berto was bleeding and he was looking for a clean fight. So Sean Porter almost duplicated the Robert Guerrero approach where Robert Guerrero was just nasty mugging and you know, Robert Guerrero was a bit dirty in his approach with Andre Berto. And you seen Berto didn't really like that. And Sean Porter had that kind of same gritty rough house. I'm going to make it aggressive. If I come in and hit you with my head on accident and it gets ruled an accidental headbutt, oh, well. And that's what happened. And Berto had a cut and it just looked like his mind was kind of taken out. He was he was looking for nice, clean, tidy work. So the thing is, I'm not comparing Terrence Crawford to Andre Berto. They're different fighters with different styles. But the thing is, how will Crawford respond if he can't easily get the spacing and Sean Porter's right in his wheelhouse? Some people, I've seen people say, oh, Sean Porter's getting knocked out, right? But Sean Porter has not to this point been knocked out. So I think it's a it's an interesting equation and we're going to see which one can make the adjustments and solve it. But I, I think this is an excellent fight. Very, very fun fight. And, you know, I'm just happy to to cover it and, and see it. But I do have questions. I have questions on both ends for Sean Porter. I have a couple questions like, for example, Sean Porter. Many will say that Sean Porter, he got to the top of the mountaintop and outside of the fight with Danny Garcia every time he got to the mountaintop he came up short Kell Brook he came up short with Keith Thurman and he came up short with Errol Spence now you can make a strong argument that he held his own and had respectable performances but he didn't get to live like a champion after those fights so there was something that was lacking that the judges felt he didn't he didn't plead his case well enough to get him the the close fight so against a guy like terrence crawford you can't really make many mistakes with him and he showed you that you know he'll he'll figure out he's ambidextrous so there's questions there when you're a guy like sean porter who's been at the the top of his class and fought the who's who of the division and you came up short even though there are close fights in fan friendly fights and the fans respected your performance do you have that extra gear to pull out and ink out a, a win against someone who's elite like terrence crawford so there's a lot of questions that will be answered in november with this particular fight i'm not worried about either fighter being in in shape crawford he's always in shape year round pretty much every time he's at shakur stevenson's fights or when you catch him about he's in shape you've seen from this ego weight watchers video that Sean Porter's clearly in shape. So all in all, it's a good fight. I look forward to breaking this down more and more on the channel. If you guys enjoy the content, consider subscribing. That goes a long way. Also, I have some affiliate links. My Amazon storefront. If you're purchasing, making purchases, you want to get some gear like me, 
you can go to my amazon storefront the link is in the description also try moment moment.com the links are in the description people a lot of people asking oh ego where you get your gear from and where do you get this and what gear are you using that's a great way to get some of the fly tech that i got i'm james bond 007 of the 707 y'all know this so let me know what you guys think sean porter looks to be in immaculate shape and he's taking it serious that's all we can ask of these fighters drop your thoughts in the comment section as always hate comment and subscribe till next video is ego signing off are you tired of your youtube videos not getting any views well consider tubebuddy I've used TubeBuddy for years to scale up my YouTube channel. Now we're sitting over 200,000 subscribers. TubeBuddy is a browser extension that offers a ton of built-in productivity and time-saving services to take your channel to the next level. Use my link in the description to get started with TubeBuddy and level up your channel faster. We work it.